Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Schilling, and I'm going to share my capstone presentation with you on workplace incivility. The objectives for this presentation include identifying uncivil behaviors, as well as other related terms. Discuss the significance of incivility to nursing and the other related stakeholders, and identify measures to combat incivility, as well as explaining the steps required to implement the proposed plan. Incivility is a blanket term for all uncivil behaviors. Other names um, in the literature include harassment, bullying, eating their young, and lateral and horizontal violence. Razzi and Bianchi explain that rude comments and insensitive remarks are at one end of the continuum and verbal or physical aggression is on the other. But realistically, any and all behaviors that show a lack of respect for uh, uh, one another are examples of incivility and they're just harmful and wrong. All nurses, regardless of their position or setting in which they work, are ethically obligated to create and maintain a healthy work environment and foster an atmosphere of professionalism and mutual respect. Nurse-to-nurse -nurse incivility or lateral violence is the most common type of incivility with a reported average of 64%. And I emphasize the word reported because determining the actual incident and prevalence of workplace incivility is difficult because it is often unrecognized and underreported. Unfortunately, according to the literature, it is more prevalent in newly, in newly licensed and young nurses, and, at, and some of the more seasoned nurses consider it a, a rite of passage. And with reports of an overall average between 68 and 90% of workplace incivility, something needs to be done. Regrettably, many nurses have reported being subjected to uncivil acts from various sources besides nurses and, and include physicians, their supervisors, and patients and their visitors. According to Lane et al. in 2019, nurses who work in ICU and intermediate care units have a greater risk of incivility from patients and their families, most likely due to the high levels of stress and severity of illness. But in the article written by McPherson and Bruxton, 2019, titled, In Their Own Words, Nurses Countering Workplace Incivility, one nurse shared that she called in sick to avoid physician rounding and that she changed um, jobs frequently secondary to incivility. In the same article, another nurse shared that she witnessed a negative outcome of workplace incivility after she accepted a director position to manage new RN graduates. And, and head up the program with the goal of changing the environment. And she explained that when she, when she witnessed the new graduates being subjected to uncivil behaviors, like physical touching and screaming and verbal abuse from departmental RNs, she stepped up to advocate for them and reported it to her supervisor. But when she, her supervisor didn't respond, um, she reported it to the senior leadership who was friends with the supervisor. So she went on to explain that no one would support her and consequently she and the new graduates resigned within months of each other. It is noticed across the literature that the outcomes of uncivil behaviors have been shown to adversely affect patient safety, organizational engagement, um, increased illness, and the professional lives of those involved. Research shows that the cost of replacing low, a low earning position um, nurse is approximately 16% of their salary, but it can be as, as high as 213% um, for high level nurses or seasoned nurses. And acts of incivility are devastating to nurses because they, they affect their uh, performance, their mental health, their intent to remain with the organization or even within the profession. Of nursing. The most difficult cost to measure though is the negative impact on personal and professional self-esteem and confidence and the role this all plays in patient safety, professional growth, and the overall quality of the life of the nurse. According to Armstrong, nurses have reported workplace incivility to have caused emotional upset and distractions to the point that it puts their patients at risk and she also cited studies that concluded that workplace incivility was related to post-traumatic stress disorders and a lack of motivation at work. 
and incivility is known to lead to an increase in absenteeism with one study reporting a 92% increased risk of, of having a long-term absence related to um, incivility. Razzi and Bianchi elaborated on the other harmful effects of workplace incivility. In addition to PTSD, it could be sleep disturbances and anxiety to name a few. And I've also read about reports of substance abuse and I personally knew a nurse who committed suicide because she was being bullied at work. So what happens to the patients? A recent study by Alquez demonstrated a direct relationship between incivility among healthcare staff and poor patient outcomes. Incivility contributes to poor communication between physician and nurses, nurse to nurse, nurse to nurse management, and it can lead a result in an increase in medication errors, among other things. Also due to poor communication, staff's gonna hesitate to report medication errors or any other detrimental patient care issues for fear of retaliation. So patients themselves have even reported a decreased confidence and satisfaction in the care they receive from the healthcare team. Alquas concluded that the nursing perspectives on eliminating medical errors and improving healthcare systems must be a part of a collective approach. And I couldn't agree more. So what can we do? So based on the information I just provided, the clinical question was developed following the PICO format. In the healthcare setting, how does incivility prevention strategies compare to no incivility prevention strategies affect staff retention and patient outcomes? Let's see. The proposed project involves cognitive rehearsal, which is an evidence-based behavioral science technique that includes a skilled facilitator who assists in discussing and rehearsing effective ways to address a problem or social situation such as incivility. Cognitive rehearsal was designed to decrease anxiety, heighten confidence, and improve impulse control. According to Clark, the use of cognitive rehearsal has reported to be an effective strategy to address incivility in the practice and educational setting. Let's take a look at some examples. Connie is an experienced nurse, and she has made it clear she has no patience with new nurses. Kim, a new graduate, reaches out to her for help with a complex patient situation. And this is what Connie's response was. I don't have time to deal with novices and I've got better things to do with my time. Now, let's see how Kim responds using cognitive rehearsal. Kim's response is using the, cause, the caring feedback model of cognitive rehearsal. Connie, I respect your opinion and hope to learn from you. I realize you are busy and have a lot going on. But earlier today, when I asked for your help, it didn't go so well. Without your support, I'm concerned that the patient will suffer. I need to ask some important questions. When can we meet to discuss them? Let's try one more. You're a nurse on the telemetry unit, and some of your coworkers engage in negative gossip and spreading rumors, and you believe you have been the target of these behaviors. As you approach the break room, you hear your name mentioned in a derogatory fashion. You decide to address the situation. You respond using the Caperson approach. When I approached the break room, I heard my name mentioned. It concerns me because being accepted as a valuable member of the team is important to me. In the future, please speak to me directly if you have something to say. According to Warner, the nurse incivility scale, or the NIS, is a nurse-specific measurement tool that measures the prevalence of workplace incivility from various sources in the clinical setting. Depending on which scale you use, it's a 37 or 42 item, five point Likert scale, and it collects details about nurses' experience with uncivil acts from five sources, which include the general, nursing, physicians, supervisors, and patient and visitors. 
High scores imply a high occurrence of incivility in that area. The literature shows that this tool is a valid and reliable tool. Here are my steps for the intervention. First, meet with department heads and the director or nurse manager. Then share real life scenarios where incivility was experienced or witnessed. Have a second meeting to include the educator and an HR representative and present the proposal to the CNO for approval. Once approved, send the information electronically to the nurses that are going to participate. And complete the nurse incivility scale initially for a baseline and then monthly training sessions to rehearse. The evaluation process includes comparing the NIS scale from the baseline to the final test and also comparing staff retention rates one year post intervention and comparing patient safety uh, statistics one year post intervention. The dissemination of this project beyond participating the participants from the ED and ICU would be to include other hospital units um, and the nurse staff council, get them on board. Um, and the results of this project could be shared in the orientation forums and on the onboarding classes. And the results of this project could also be shared with other the other stakeholders um, and other professional nursing organizations, or it could be published also in a nursing publication. The gaps my research revealed that there really is no clear definition and classification of uncivil behaviors. And nurses are not educated in recognizing or addressing um, incivility. And the existing studies lack educational intervention for organizations to respond to the challenges associated with workplace incivility. Barriers to consider for this project would be determining the actual incidence and prevalence due to the underreporting, as I mentioned earlier, and a lack of support by nurse leaders and in inadequate tools to mitigate the plan. And finally, limitations to consider are that the sample size would be small due to the size of the specialty hospital where I work, and more time may be needed to gather the resources and actually implement the plan. So, in conclusion, literature has proven that incivility not only exists, but can have a devastating impact on individuals as well as the organization. Incivility in nursing is an ongoing problem in the healthcare setting that threatens the delivery of safe patient care. The magnitude of workplace incivility to the associated stakeholders there, it, it proves there's a need to have an um, education and tools to combat these behaviors. Cognitive rehearsal and other tools such as the NIS scale are proven strategies that will assist nurses in this matter. Thank you for watching and listening to this very important issue in nursing. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions or any comments you may have regarding my chosen topic and, and presentation. And I would love to hear your stories retaining to other experiences or actually witnessing incivility in the workplace. Thanks again.